Fearless. Determination. Passion. Stamina. And the will to win. The end result, the Rick Motek Sports Car Series. Sports brings you the Rick Motek Sports Car Series, brought to you by Rick Motek High Performance Sim Racing Equipment, and in part by TD's Tree Service. Live Mondays, 8:30 p.m. Eastern. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Apex Racing TV. Welcome to our home. Uh, welcome to Brands Hatch here in the UK for race four of the Extreme Motorsports Freakmatech Sports Car Series brought to you in part by TD's Tree Service. We're here for a special 90 minute feature race today, endurance race, where the, uh, the Mazdas and the Mustangs will be testing out the 3.7 kilometer Grand Prix circuit, which hosted the Grand Prix many years ago in fact it last hosted the british grand prix uh oh about about 31 years ago and uh joining me in the commentary box a man who definitely wasn't around for that it's a i racing road pro series driver alex simpson good morning alex yeah good morning uh, uh how many years ago was it uh back in 1986 um 1986 <laughs> i definitely wasn't around for it <laughs> oh, just oh. showing me showing me age and uh, yeah, you obviously think I'm younger than I am. So thank you very much for that one. <laughs> Get it off of a compliment. Uh, you may be wondering where Andrew Woodhouse is. Uh, he should be around, hopefully, in a moment. Um, he's skiving. He's in bed still, fast asleep. Uh, Alarm was I don't, never don't blame, I don't blame it. Well, but yeah, uh, I think we're in for a good one uh, today, Alex. Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Back at, uh, I think it's the first time the series has been to the UK. And um, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a good one. Yeah, I don't recall it being here before. Um, I certainly certainly haven't seen Donington. I don't know about... Um, did we not do an Alton Park once? I can't remember. I think, I think actually, we, we, I've just looked back through the seasons. We have been here before, actually. We were here in Season 6, but this is before obviously, we started broadcasting yeah. uh, the series. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, Browns is a good circuit. I like it. The GP layout, always a bit interesting. There's some tricky corners here that drivers seem to find a challenge to sort of get the right rhythm around and you know it's one of the old school circuits where you know you go off the track and then there's grass you know there's not this massive runoff area of um, tarmac and concrete that can save you so you know you've you've to push you know you have actually got to be on the limit kind of thing and uh, you know you take a step over that and there's not an awful lot of runoff beyond the grass either, so you didn't tend to uh, end up in the Arnco pretty quickly, so it's a challenge, Brands Hatch. Well, we'll find out more about that cha the challenges that the drivers will face in our track guide, and that's coming up now. Welcome everyone to Brands Hatch GP Circuit, located here in beautiful Kent, England. Great to have you with us as we provide you your track guide today in the Ford Mustang around this two and a half mile road course. Brands Hatch was originally a motorcycle race course back in the 1920s. Then on April 16th, 1950, the first auto race was held around the shorter one mile road course. Ten years later, the course was given permission to extend the track 
to its current 2.43 mile length and has continued to host motorsports racing to this day. Well, let's begin our track guide around this historic English road course as we get up through the gears and head down the front straightaway. You'll notice our pit areas to the right, main grandstands to the left as we head up the hill here to one of the most famous corners at the track, Paddock Bend. Turn one as we head down this drop off out of turn one to head up the hill to turn two, Druid's Bend. This is a late apexing corner. Very exciting at the start of races to see those packed fields come roaring up through that hairpin. Down through into turn three, down the hill here. You want to get a smooth entry through the apex, get right back to throttle, use up as much exit as possible to get that speed to head down to Surtees. Very technical corner, roll off the brake, let the car settle right down to the bottom of the apex, get back to throttle, and pick up speed for the first long straightaway here at Brands. Overtaking opportunities here, certainly coming down this hill, a lot of speed here, some good draft on this straightaway. Mustangs will be hitting about 125 miles an hour as we approach turn five, coming through the apex and exiting five. We'll come into the very fast turn six, just a light tap of the brakes. I'm out of Westfield Bend, down the hill through Dingledale and up into Sheen Curve. Blind entry, turn seven, We've got to get that entry just right, take it right up to the edge of the grass. Back down on the brakes for turn eight through Sterling's Bend and up to the second last straightaway here, which brings us to Clark Curve. Turn nine, the final corner on the track. Another difficult corner. You want to get a good run out of here as it brings you up onto the front straightaway. Again, let it drift wide and get up through the gears and head down for our final crossing of the stripe here at Brands Hatch. That is your track guide for Brands Hatch. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thanks as always to the guys for the track guide and uh, we're just running through the formation lap now before we get the race underway where we're going to be seeing uh, many different strategies unfolding in this uh, 90 minute endurance race in the Ritmus X Sports Car Series running through the championship standings heading into this fourth race meeting of the season. We've been to Daytona, we've been to Sebring, we've been to Montreal, now we're here at Brands. Mike Dam leads the way just one point ahead of Kevin Ford in second. Then it's a 10 point gap back to Scott Kennedy in third, Stephen Thomas fourth, Patty Anucci in fifth for Team Potato, and then uh, Ross Ruddock in sixth, Brandon Whitworth seventh, one point behind him, and a point behind him as well in eighth is Leo Wright with Mike Berg at ninth and uh, Matthew Cotilla in tenth. Those are the pros in the open category. It's Scott Brooks, one point ahead of Mike Ruddock in tenth, Mike Monaghan in third, fourth is Chad Osborne, fifth Sam Cork. Moving over to the, uh, the MX5s. Leading the way there is Travis Fenke. He's got a 16-point lead over John Allen in second. Third, Tom Rafje. Fourth, Rob Hartley. And fifth, Jeff Jacobs. Over in the opens is Jordy Fike, who's got a 8-point lead over Joe Boyd. Chris Torman in third. Fourth, Dan Corrido. And Ryan Walker in fifth. We've just got enough time to go in through the grid as well before we get the green flag as they are on their way into Sterling's. Mike Dam on pole. Second, Andy Shield. Third, Scott Kennedy. Fourth, Kevin Ford. So a bit of a gap between the Two championship contenders, fifth Stephen Thomas, and in the Mazdas, the top fives, Rob Hartley, Travis Schwenke, Ryan Walker, Tom Rafje, and Jordi Fike. Here comes the field then into the final corner, into clearways. And the iRacing safety car will pull into the pit lane. And now the field's in the hands of Mike Dow, who starts to build up the pace. But getting at the green flag any moment. Now there it is. Around four, the Rimatex Sports Car Series here at Brands Hatch is underway. Yeah, good start from uh, everybody. I thought for a moment the field was getting checked up a little bit and we might have some sort of contact before the start-finish line, but everybody alive to what was going on and, uh, and no contact, so good start. Let's have a look, see what the uh, MX-5s are going to do as well. Again, they form really, really close up, almost on... Oh, no, there is a bit of contact in the MX-5 with uh, all the I checking think up going John on. Allen, is it? Number 22, well it is John Allen, uh, that's not what he wanted, green flag in the air with the Mazdas, we saw a safety car, uh, we had seen a safety car by this point last week in Montreal, and it uh, looks like Allen's the uh, the biggest loser from 
uh, yeah, the the leader, uh, Rob Hartley, backing everyone up for the lights went green. Yeah, it's pretty common practice, isn't it? Just to back them up a little bit um, so you can get the best run. Um, short little sprint here to, um, you know, sort of druids and that. So, yeah, I think um, people were just getting a bit too close to one another and having to break and check up there. So just give each other a little bit of room, you know, 90-minute race. Fortunately, yeah. I don't think anybody was too severely damaged, but there definitely was some uh, in contact. Now, if you're new to the series, we do have live stewards in the Ritmatech Sports Car Series, so we will get a whisper in our ear and on the iRacing uh, timing if anything is under review. We have had uh, some of the starts under review recently. Most of them have ended up in no further action, but uh, we'll see if anything's happened there. I expect to see the same there. But uh, Mike Dam coming out of the final corner to complete the opening lap of the race. He leads Scott Kennedy getting a position over Andy Scheel, who we uh, saw in the BSR Porsche Cup. Back at the start of uh, back at the start of the racing season in March, Kevin Ford fourth, no positions gained, uh, just a few positions going further uh, down the field. But the top ten: Dam, Kennedy, Steele, Ford, Thomas, Ianucci, Davis, Russell Ruddock, Mike Burgetton, Matthew Cotilla in the Mustangs. Yeah, good um, good first lap for the Mustangs. Um, no one really dropping off, so pack still nice and uh, and close. See how this one uh, evolves. Travis Schwenke, uh, so not Travis Schwenke, Alex, uh, Travis Davis uh, in seventh place. Uh, hasn't had the best of form recently. Uh, he spoke to uh, the organisers this week and uh, he says he just wants to uh, to get some points on the board and is uh, hoping for a top five. And uh, he's going the right way about it so far. He's uh, in seventh place, not too far away from that top five goal. Yeah, yeah, long race um, to do that. He did come in and have a, have a little chat with us the other day, but... Obviously, we were broadcasting. Um, yeah, unfortunately, didn't come back. So I wonder what he uh, what he wanted to have a little word with us about. So if you're watching this back, Travis. Pop your head in and and um, yeah, have a chat. Um, by all means, um, focus on uh, Facebook or something like that. And uh, yeah, we'll jump online. Have, they have been speaking to the drivers as well about these uh, 90 minute races. Uh, they're saying how mentally draining it can be. Uh, we were doing similar stints in the uh, Le Mans 24 hours in the Ferrari and compare that Alex to uh, these Ford Mustangs and the Mazda MX-5s you've really got to wrestle with these cars a lot more than uh, what we were having to do in the Ferrari yeah I mean uh, you know as, uh, as long as the Le Mans race is the, the track actually itself is still quite nice to drive because obviously you, you're relaxing for a good portion of that lap um, with it mainly flat out so um, and of course the Ferrari seem to be glued to the track as well so you know the MX-5s they um, might be the rookie car but actually once you're on the limit with that car it's uh, it's quite easy to drop it and the um, same really goes for the Mustang as well um, many a times when I was doing the practice for the uh, commentary race that we did it was in that car it was so easy just to carry a bit too much speed have a bit of understeer going into the corner and try and you know get on that loud power pedal get the car around and it just spins on you so not easy cars to drive yeah quite a few times especially at the tracks where there's a quick change of the direction we do get that on a few occasions here at uh, brands hatch but yeah the mazda uh, can uh, throw its toys out of the pram somewhat um but okiyama a few weeks ago in a uh, other series i was watching there was um cars spinning out so, uh, raymond bader jr um Oh, nearly losing it. He is in uh, 14th place. Him and Scott Brooks were uh, exchanging positions on this lap. Uh, battle outside the uh, top 10. Um, um, yeah. Dam's having problems with his connection. Just flicked out a few times there. Let's hope yeah. that sorts itself out. Um, yeah. Because it wouldn't be the first time that we've lost um, Mike Dam for a uh, disconnect, would it? So I think it's what we've lost him a couple of times last season. Moment. Yeah, I think I remember him losing it while leading at, um, mm. I think it might have been our, the, our first race of the season at, at a Daytona. Uh, Mike Dam doing it at near the, near the end of the race. That was about two laps to go, wasn't yeah. it, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Um, did the equivalent of uh, Wales today. Um, ended up bottling it a bit uh, onto the back straight. We've lost our uh, one and only Welsh viewer, probably. As uh, Here comes Andy Sheil on Scott Kennedy for second position. I'm going to look down Pilgrim's drop into... Uh, Hawthorne Ben this 
very quick right hand to the fastest part of the circuit really through the through the forest don't see too many races on the Grand Prix circuit due to the um, the noise issues the noise restrictions in the UK but uh, always great to see around the Grand Prix circuit here and this battle for second place starting to heat up and it has helped Mike down quite a bit he has been edging away just a few tenths of a second each lap now as Scott Kennedy has to withstand the pressure from Andy Shield yeah, I'm wondering if uh, Andy thinks it's perhaps a bit go time because you can see that gap starting to build up. Doesn't want to let um, Mike get out of that slipstream range. So, why well, he's putting a bit of pressure on now. Kennedy looked good at the start of the season. Dropped off a little bit, didn't he? And then he's just picked it back up again. So, I know we're only on race four, but um, yeah, it's good to see. Um, this sort of pack of, what, four or five drivers now. So, the you know, the front's quite hard to tell who's going to have a chance of winning this oh yeah you speak about Scott Kennedy first race of the season 90 minute race at Daytona he won then I uh, got a fifth place at Sebring and a seventh place at Gilles Villeneuve so it has got worse since uh, the opening race of the season but we're back at Brands and we're back at a 90 minute race as well let's see if that's what the Californian is made of and uh, yeah the Pacific time so he has a long finished work in the United States uh, whilst here in the UK it's just coming up to uh, nearly two o'clock in the morning and this battle for second place continues uh, to rage on. No surprises who one of the biggest movers in the field is uh, Alex. John Allen despite that bit of damage that he sustained at the start of the race as uh, the battle for second place heats up again in the Mustangs and I've just changed that. Andy Shield into second place past Scott Kennedy into Westfield. Ben now here comes Kevin Ford. He senses an opportunity. Looks up the inside. Very close there and through they go wheel to wheel but Scott Kennedy should be able to hold on indeed he does good uh, uh, you know, opportunity trying to uh, get it through there at the same time as Shields went past for uh, Ford it didn't work out but uh, yeah he's seen how um, Andy's got through now so um, hopefully he can try and do that as well he's got a great run actually out of the final corner surely if he gets the line right here he can have a go into Druids we can do then. You can see that Scott Kennedy had to take a bit of a defensive line into Paddock Hill Bend. You can really lose a lot of speed on the exit as a result. Kevin Ford not affording to take too many risks in the he had a chance going. then to poke it up the inside. Yeah, he did, yeah. On board. Oh, very oh. much sideways there for uh, Kennedy. We lost Dam again. His connection just popped out. And he's back. So <laughs> I think that's going to um, give uh, Andy something to uh, worry about when he gets there. But yeah. Kennedy um, just lighting up the rears like I said earlier on it's, it's so easy to do especially if you're on the limit and yeah it was a good job of holding on to it if you've got confidence in the car you can do that but now Kevin Ford fancies the opportunity down the Pilgrims drop we go under the bridge where we saw a really bizarre incident in the BSR TC a few weeks ago Ford through Hawthorne Ben uses that more bit of curb on the inside line and then into Westfields you can see uh, Scott Kennedy turning in a little bit earlier than Kevin Fors. Now we have this plunge down the hill and back up it again into, into Sheen Curve. This right-hander, very easy to get onto the grass and the gravel there. And Scott Kennedy really flirting with that uh, runoff area on the exit. Now through Sterling's great part of the course, this uh, Brands Hatch Grand Prix section. And then under the bridge again and into clearways and that's complete another lap. What I'm quite surprised about, Am, is I've uh, just jumped back to the um, MX-5s. The pack is starting to spread itself apart, and I really didn't expect to see this. Hartley and Svenke, um, you know, how how much they um, just pull away. You know, they're so quick. And if the guys aren't on them with the draft, then um, they'll lose that very quickly. And that's kind of what's happened. Walker um, has um, sort of half gone with them, but has been dropped as well. Rathji behind him, almost out of the slipstream. John Allen working his way up through the field after that little bit of damage on uh, lap one uh, well before lap one and uh, there's a bit of a battle going on side by side actually further back oh well uh, it's not a battle anymore oh it's Joe um, Boyd someone's, yeah Boyd's gone rolling and um, Corrido involved in that they were side by side and we've got a safety car safety car is out then for the second race meeting in a row we do have a safety car on Alex Joe Boyd and Jeff Jacobs, Jacobs who's moved over to the Mazda MX Fives for this season. I apologize, it's not Jeff Jacobs. He was uh, almost collected in it himself. It was a, yeah, it, it was Dan, Boyd and Dan Carido, both involved. And 
Uh, I'm just trying to get a camera angle so I can see a better version of it. Oh, yeah. Pips the right the rear, and over he goes. Both going for the same bit of tarmac there. Um, yeah, so I think Boyd just needed to leave a little bit more room on the inside, didn't he? You know, he can't... Um, Dan can't disappear. That's the thing, so... Um, yeah, a bit unfortunate, that one. I'm just having a look at it from myself and Carido's perspective. He had a very tight line into the corner. Mm. Maybe could have uh, moved moved on to the, the bit of curve on the inside line. But um, we'll wait and see what the organisers deem on that one. But yeah, we are now under safety car conditions. We usually seem to find these in uh, our 90-minute races here in, on Apex Racing TV. So safety car outs as uh, Mike Dan will soon enough pick up the higher racing safety car. And uh, we have a chance to breathe. And I wonder if anyone may take the opportunity to take uh, a pit stop. Maybe a bit early for that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we saw people take the um, opportunity last week, didn't we? And um, we were it hoping really work, that some, yeah. Yeah, some might be able to, but in the end, they'd still need to pit anyway. So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The pits were closed the last time by, so I don't think they could um, could come in. So we'll see if any of them decide to, to duck in now. Um, what we saw last week when they did that was that you know, having to work their way through the traffic, even with the fresh tyres, actually was um, a bit more of a, a negative impact than a, than a positive one. So I think we'll see most drivers stay out here. If it was a bit closer on the timings, I think maybe we were uh, with, the, with the pit stop window. I think we might have seen a few of them come in, but as it is bang in the middle of the stint, I think they're going to stay out. Mike Dam's lead is now a distant memory uh, when, when the safety car will come in. Uh, they're open for the uh, the Mustangs. Guessing, um, I'm guessing they might do it differently for uh, the Mazdas. One on one class on each lap. I don't know, but um, yeah, safety car will be leading the round for a few laps. We'll uh, take the time to run you through the race order. Mike Dam leads the way. Andy Shields second. Scott Kennedy third. Kevin Ford fourth. Thomas fifth, uh, and then Pierucci sixth. Davis seventh. Ruddock eighth. Burgett ninth, and Michael Ruddock running at the top 10 then in uh, the, the Mazdas just as Alex was saying that it was getting spread out that crash happened and everything's yeah. all back together again uh, Hartley leads the way Schwenke second Walker third Raptor fourth and uh, John Allen the biggest mover seven positions gained he's up in fifth well they've had a chance to come in who has taken it someone Kennedy. has yeah so he was second at, yeah he was at lost second place coming in wants to come in another further back as well I think that's Chad Osborne into the pits. So. A lot of smoke there from Scott Kennedy. Don't know what that was. Maybe he was taking a. I was going to say fast repair, but um, no fast repairs in this series. Changing the tyres, I can see as well on that. Yeah. That Ford Mustang. Yeah, now of course, if we get another one um, later on in the race, you know, it could, could pan out for him. Um, I think uh, this particular stop is going to be fairly, or this uh, caution period is going to be fairly minimal. Um, we're not in the position where we have to wait for the cars to get back and do any way throughs or anything like that. So I think actually we're going to um, we're going to see uh, perhaps next lap the um, MX Fires have the op opportunity to come in, and um, so for the ST guys, and then um, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, we're back under green conditions. We did hear in our ear that it was just the GS class that the pit lane was open yeah. to, so uh, and the lights are still on the safety car, I should add, so we'll probably get the pit lane open for the ST class, the Mazda MX-5 class, this time around. We'll see if any of those drivers decide to come in. Uh, Scott, cause at the moment, Scott Kennedy and Chad Osborne are right in the thick of the Mazda MX-5 traffic, which could make things interesting for them. Yeah, we just had a little whisper in our ear there, just to um, point out that the ST window is open for the pits. All the pits are open for the STs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we might see if some of those come in. Where's uh, Where's Hartley? Let's see. He's going to decide to duck in. But yeah, it's good. I, in, a, in a way, I'm kind of glad that this has come out because I did I did feel like the MX5 race was just sort of um, you know slipping away a little bit because of the separation. So. Start was a little bit chaotic and caught a few people out. And this is definitely going to give them an opportunity to 
to uh, reform up and um, yeah, go at it again. And by the time we're going to be finished with this, it's going to be just over a normal sort of race distance. So, guys, everybody's reset, and we've got an hour left. Well, while we wait for the Mazdas to come in and sit, and we'll see it. We'll see if anyone takes any pit stops. We'll take the opportunity now to run the safety oh, car. Oh, there's a load of them in. Oh, load of them in. In fact, we'll, we'll hold on the commercial break. We'll see what happens. Hartley in, everyone in, pretty much the top four in, top five, top six. Uh, pretty much everyone in, which means that um, there is a window of opportunity here for everybody. Get the tyres changed as well. You can see some of the cars popping up on the jacks. And uh, Alex, I think um, we sh it'll be interesting to see when they come in again. Look at John Allen. No tyres, I reckon. He's jumped everybody. Yeah. 12 seconds oh. stop. Yeah, just gone for the uh, just gone for the fuel, hasn't he? So, so uh, that's interesting. I wonder if um, you know the um, they can make it here with one more stop. You know, it's going to be close, isn't it? And they normally can run longer than the um, Mustang, so I think that's a definite possibility. But yeah, so Alan going for the no tire option. Um, Definitely got him back in, in this pack. He's going to have to just hold on, I think, though, isn't he, with those guys on fresh tyres. And Corrido, the only car deciding to stay out, and he was one of the cars involved in the big crash, which is the reason why we're under safety car here in round four of the Ritmatech Sports Car Series. The lights are still on the safety car. When we come back, we'll be getting set for the restart as we take a quick commercial break here on Apex Racing TV. Lights are out on the safety car. We are going to be going back to green flag racing at the end of this lap. Lap 11 of round four of the Ritmus Sports Car Series on Apex Racing TV. Adam Bath and Alex Simpson with you for this one. Uh, tonight, uh, we are staying awake through the night as we are here at Brands Hatch. Mike Dam leads the way, Andy Shield second. Uh, but the strategy, Alex, has well and truly been uh, thrown down in the in the Mazdas. Dan Carido staying out. Don Allen going for the no tyres and leapfrogging quite a few drivers. I wonder if Dan just didn't realise that everyone was coming in because obviously he was a bit further back because he was mainly caught up in that accident. So um, he was sort of in and around the Mustangs who were sort of coming out. So yeah, maybe he didn't see him come in, but we'll see. I think, um, I think he's got... Well, they have one more extra stop to do, so yeah, it's, I think it's un <laughs> the race has unfolded for him somewhat after that crash. So. Well, as uh, Joe Boyd uh, flipped over, Dan Carino's uh, race may be about to 
uh, flip over from first, maybe towards the back of the field. In comes the safety car then, and in the field is once again in the hands of Mike Dam. And we get the green flag, and we're back to racing here. Brand Satch in the Ripletech Sports Car Series, and straight away you can see Stephen Thomas uh, trying to get right in the mix as we go into Paddock Hill Bend, looking at the inside of Kevin Ford. Very close there now, Pasquale Inucci in the team potato car trying to get the move done on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend as we go up to the Druids. And Kevin Ford, uh, who started in fourth, now finds himself in third, trying to get second place already as we go through Druids. Live action already occurring in the in the Mustangs. Yeah, we'll stay with them as they get contact oh, further back. I'm hearing some Carnage again. Well, we said the race, the strategy was going to unfold for him. It looks like his whole race has unfolded. I don't know what he was. I don't know what that was all about. In fact, he, he crashed. He, I think he, I think he unfolded it for himself. Um, Alex, if you look on the replay, have a look. See what happened We're on board. That takes the restart. Nice. Seems like everything's okay. He's just like, oh, what happened? Oh wow, that's got to be hardware failure. You know, can't be anything hardware else. Hardware failure, a very angry man. Um, don't know. Don't know what that was. Chad Osborne's dropping down the order. Don't know what's happened to, uh, to Chaz. He's losing position. Oh, he's got a lot of damage to the back of his. He might want to stick on this replay. I don't know, I don't know what's happened oh, to him. Well, but, um, I've gone back and not far enough, I'm afraid. So let's, do, let's go back a bit further. Ah, he lost it on his... Oh, he lost it on his own and gets a little bit of a helping hand by the car of... Oh, got to press the button, Scott Kennedy. Oh, Kennedy. One of the guys who actually came in. Scott Kennedy, Alex. It's just un unfolded completely for him. He was second. He was second for the majority of their first, that first in before the safety car came out. And now oh, he's having to, a heavily damaged car. That's done for. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he'll get that repaired. I think that's Scott's race done, unfortunately. That decision to come in backfired massively. So, took a gamble. And unfortunately, this is this is what can happen when you're obviously in and around the pack, you know? So, sometimes having those front positions really does um, just give you a little bit of safety. Disaster, Rolly. Won the opening race at Daytona. We were saying during the early few laps that Maybe this 90-minute race would be a chance for him to get back on form, maybe get a podium. Instead, he is in the garage, and I don't think we're going to be seeing much of him for the rest of the evening. Andy Shield then versus Kevin Ford. Battle for second place now. Kevin Ford, who came so close, Alex, to winning it uh, Montreal last week. If it wasn't for a slowdown, he would have won the race. Yeah, and being in the lead of the championship right now as well. But, yeah, Dam's got that by one point, so crazy really how close this uh, the race was and how close the championship is at this point so I hope that continues you've got the likes of Thomas and Inucci, um just um, sort of close by as well it's going to be a great great season all the way to the end but uh, yeah Ford was on the attack but now it looks like he's a little bit playing a little bit of a defensive role as uh, Thomas got a great exit out of the final corner Thomas doing a 35-3 on that last lap. Uh, very close lap times indeed around this circuit. Quickest driver on that last occasion was Andy Shiel with a 35-1. Half a second quicker than Mike Dam, closing the gap a little bit there now, down to uh, four tenths of a second. Dam is going to find it pretty difficult to run away with this one, uh, if anything is to go by in uh, the early stages. We are, of course, only three laps into this new green flag run, but Mike Dam not being able to run away with this one. And Andy Shiel, Alex... Uh, we talked about uh, him racing in the BSR Porsche Cup. Don't think it's going to um, it's going to have too much of an impact on him here. But racing around the likes of Brands Hatch could help him. Yeah, I think so. Um, in a way, a very similar car to drive because the Porsche just um, seems to go take forever to break as well and get the car turned in. So, and very similar to the Mustangs, a bit of a boat in that sense. Both cars are so. Um, yeah. So, so maybe um, we just had a little um, word in our ear. I don't know if you caught that, Adam. Yes, yeah, so cars 420 under in, for, <laughs> 420 under investigation by the stewards. Uh, I don't think we're going to see too much action because Dan Carrillo is out of the race, so if he had any blame uh, to play in uh, that crash with Joe Boyd. I think um, his punishment has been already served. He's he's out of the race. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. Boyd will be a little frustrated, of course. Three laps down, nothing else he can do now. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I think um, I think they might look at that as a racing incident, to be honest. But we'll see. Well, uh, It'll be nice to look. know what the what the officials thought, you know. Yep, uh, they will take a look at it. There you go. So we heard from we heard from them there, and uh, yeah, we'll wait and see uh, what happens. But um, yeah, the Mustang and the Porsche being alike—that is uh, something that we've just found out there. Uh, Kevin Ford back on the pace again, 35.198. He loves racing at Montreal. Uh, looks like he is enjoying the same here at Brands Hatch. Has had much more time to practice in the car recently and uh, it is really paying dividends he really looks like a championship contender this year uh, Kevin Ford was strong towards the end of last season and he's carried that through to this year uh, has already got a win at Sebring was as we were saying just a straight away from winning at uh, Montreal it wasn't for a slowdown in the chicane and uh, yeah currently running third place here in the Mustangs at Brands Hatch and with, uh, just over an hour to go plenty of opportunity to try and win this one even with uh, what could be two more pit stops to make but he's Ford Mustangs I'm still I'm just still amazed at this um, this pack still so close um, Travis just behind 1.3 seconds back he's dropped a little bit but um, yeah the top five that just seems unseparable today so pit stops are gonna be so important when they come around and um, uh, maybe an opportunity for Andy to go for the lead here he's up the inside into uh, Paddock Hill, good on the brakes, damn leaves enough inside. room, and um, I think uh, Ford is going to go through as well, maybe even into the lead here, he got a fantastic exit, what a great move, two in one, and he just thought he took the lead, Ford says, uh, no I don't think so, and now behind you've got Thomas and um, Dam going at it as well, side by side, out of uh, Graham Hill Bend. Well, we're here in Britain, and what Murray Walker would say to that is fantastic. What a fantastic job there by Kevin Ford to get the opportunity on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend. He could see what was going on between Shield and Mike Dam. Uh, Sheila took a very, very, very uh, inside line into the Paddock Hill corner and had got most of the car over the inside kerb. And Ford was able to get up the inside. He had put in the quickest lap of anybody on that last run of the, around the circuit, Kevin Ford. And the start of the lap has been absolutely brilliant. And he's taken the lead. That was the barnstorm of a move up the inside into Drew's bend. And uh, he's now starting to put a bit of advantage over, over Andy Shield. He's already got half a second in hand here. Kevin Ford has been unleashed here on lap 16. Yeah, that was, a, that was such a fantastic move. And uh, it was a good move from Andy, to be honest. But, yeah, he just, just a little bit too tight. I didn't think he realised the amount of room that Dan was affording him. And... Um, you know, he could have uh, carried a bit of speed in, but as it was, both drivers, one on the inside, one on the outside, just uh, checked up and gave up way too much uh, time in that corner. And uh, damn, um, Ford took it just as he would do normally and uh, just got a massive drive coming off there. And uh, yeah, that was brilliant. And uh, we're here in our, in our rear, Adam, as well. Yep, incidents involving cars 4 and 20. No action uh, taken between them. Uh, it, yeah. I figured that was going to be much the case, to be honest. We're yet to see, uh, since we've had this uh, feature added to our broadcast on Apex Racing TV, any action taken uh, yet. Um, we'll wait and see. We've got quite a few races to go in the season, so uh, I'm sure we'll see um, the rule book uh, thrown at somebody uh, during this race, but the during this series. But um, as we've seen since we've been covering this series, start uh, since the start of the year. From the driving standards are pretty well maintained in this series, so not going to be often we're going to be seeing that happening. I think it's time to give some loves to love to the uh, ST class. Um, at the yes. minute, we've been just focused on the uh, Mustangs because it has been such a great battle. But equally, um, the MX-5 is right there as well. The top four cars in that class. Um, I wouldn't say they're nose to tail, but they're certainly right there. Travis having a good race, eight tenths of a second out front from uh, John Allen so Allen's been able to sort of stay with even though he has his um, uh, sort of old tires on the car um, Rathji behind him and then you've got sort of Hartley just uh, lurking I feel you know in fourth place definitely has the pace to go with, go with his teammate if he needs to but he's uh, just sort of there at the moment so. well, uh, 
I was just going to say, yeah, Travis Schwenke has got the lead since the restart. So, uh, yeah, Mike Dam settling into the second place. But uh, without with this uh, no-tire strategy, uh, I don't know how it's going to work in terms of his position. He was, of course, uh, about fifth or sixth in class before the safety car came out. So we'll see if he ends up there when we get to the second round of stops for the, for the Mazdas. There's two Mustangs have been in, Alex, Mike Dam and, and, and Pai Inucci. Yeah, I, I, I mean, just right on their window, isn't it, I think? MX-5s in and around them as they're coming out. Not exactly what they uh, wanted. Dam just got out ahead of all of them, but uh, Iannucci, unfortunately, right in the mix. So that'll hold him up uh, somewhat. But slow stop for um, for Pat. 19.4 uh, seconds compared to 17.1. That's why he's in the thick of it right now. Those two seconds lost could have put him ahead of... Uh, Charles, thank you. But now he finds himself behind the likes of Raf J, John Allen. Allen, 14 positions gained for him since the start of the race. That has been helped by a few drivers not participating. Uh, Russell Classen, uh, Dan Carido with that crash. Chad Osborne has been in the pits for a while. He's only just made it out. He's been in the pits for eight minutes. And then a Scott Kennedy with his big crash. He looks like he is done for the day. He has exited the session. So I don't think we're going to be seeing him for the rest of the evening. We'll hopefully see him back next week at Lime Rock Park. See if any of the Mustangs come in on this lap. Uh, Kevin Ford has stayed out yet again. Andy Shield likewise. So it looks like an early roll of the dice by Mike Dam after losing that lead. Alex, he might be trying to get in the quick laps now. Get that clear air, which he has duly done. And maybe try and find himself back to the front. Yeah, I mean, what's he got? 13 seconds before he catches the Scott Brooks at the back there. So, yeah, it's going to take full advantage of it, I feel. Um, lap times, let's see what he does uh, next time by. Um, quick stop. I'm assuming he's taken tyres, but we'll have to wait and see on that one, I think. Front three, still very, very close, though. Um, less than a second separating um, each, uh, each battle. Qualifying times are really close as well for the... Uh, for the Mustangs and uh, the top seven separated by a second in, in qualifying time so that is pretty close around this circuit uh, just seeing if there's any close battles going on in um, the Mazdas for you Alex we have been showing a lot of airtime to the uh, to the Mustangs today close battle between uh, Chris Torman and Jeff Jacobs not Jeff Jacobs though Torman and uh, Joe Boyd uh, Boyd who um, is lap over. down ah lap down Boyd's lap down unfortunately the closest one I think on the MX-5s that we've got is uh um, Ryan uh, Walker and uh, Rob Hartley here just a couple of tenths of uh, away from each other Ryan Walker who, uh, who was doing pretty well in the Jetta the VW Jetta in the Club 73 Touring Car Championship at the weekend at Monza uh, they had a bit of an, uh, a major moment in race 2 where uh, both two, both the cheese and wine cars ran out of fuel within sight of a 1-2 finish that being boosted that took the win there but Walker hoping for a uh, podium here today, it's as uh, Brands Hatch currently sits fifth in class after the opening round of pit stops and uh, on his own at the moment so he can turn uh, some good laps. Quickest uh, Mustang then on that last lap uh, was Mike Dam, fastest uh, personal best for him as well, 34.873, mm. which was uh, nearly a second quicker than what Kevin Ford is doing at the moment, Alex. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, I think. He's going for that strategy that you were talking about, getting in early. So, um, with the length of the race that we've got here, you know, he's got there's a, there's a bit of a larger window than we normally see. So, took that opportunity. Um, we also saw just a move as well. Hartley moved himself up and into fourth place. Decided, uh, sorry, third place. Decided it was time for him to start to um, to get by. Rastri lost a little bit of ground to um, Allen. It was like 1.8 seconds, so needed to get by, really. Um, start to close that gap back down. Certainly lost the uh, slipstream at this point. And uh, Allen only three-tenths of a second now starting to attack uh, uh, Travis. So yeah, I think uh, Allen needs to stay right there as well, doesn't he? Because he's got that damage. He's slower on a straight line. We saw that when we were on board with him. And uh, it'll also affect the uh, fuel efficiency of the car, too. So tucked up in the draft he's not going to have any problems as Alex is alluding to in the 60 minute races we have in the Rumor Tech Sports Car Series we usually see the pit stops occur over a over a 10 to 15 minute window 
here in the uh, 90 minute races we haven't just got uh, one pit stop to worry about we've got two uh, and they will be occurring over the uh, the whole 90 minute race we've already seen the Mazdas make their opening pit stop we're just starting to see the Mustangs do that now we had Michael Burgett and Raven Bader Jr. coming into the pits on uh, this lap they become the for the uh, next two cars to come in so we've got four Mustangs in so far we're waiting for the majority though still make uh, pit stoppers uh, there is still a good battle in the uh, the Mazdas between Travis Schwenke and John Allen and this is now for the lead Alex John Allen looks like he's weathered the storm Schwenke um, Schwenke's tyres look like they might have just started to go off, off and John Allen's starting to pounce again yeah cars looking very very good at the minute I have to say um, even with the, uh, the little bit of front end damage but uh, just looks like he's got a bit more grip he was able to take a much tighter line through uh, Graham Hill Bend there and um, no issues just coming out of um, what's it the 30s that one isn't it yes yeah <laughs> I always get 30s and <laughs> Sterling's wrong I got I always get 30s and Graham Hill Ben wrong uh, but one person that has got uh, the pit lane right is uh, Andy Shield he's coming to the pits along with TD Travis Davis now this is going to be interesting to see where Mike Dan emerges he did a 134.9 on that last lap uh, Andy Shield did a 135.0 so bit slower there but only by a few hundredths uh, whereabouts is Mike Dam on the circuit though as uh, Andy Shield is in his box in his box now for about 17 seconds 18 seconds 19 seconds it's not a quick stop by Mike uh, Andy Shield and through goes Mike Dam straight away Alex 26 seconds he's been in there for nearly half a minute I wonder if he's uh, sped on entry into the pit lane got a problem Travis Davis not far behind him as well hmm. so yeah they're all seem to be having they all and they all just come out that's got to be tires everybody there has got to be taking tires um, but 37 seconds that was the, by far the longest we've seen from um, Andy um, everyone else in and around 22 to 24 seconds they're not too far off of what um, Pat did but still a little bit slower so yeah Andy I wonder if he uh, forgot to turn the button off or something like that, you know, just to stop the fuel, because uh, it seems like uh, he's absolutely brimmed it. Oh, well, this is yeah, Andy Who knows? Shield. Maybe a speeding penalty on the way in? I don't know. It could have been that as well, so we had to wait a few seconds. Well, this is Andy Shield's second race meeting in the Rumor Tech Sports Car Series. Raced at Montreal last week. Uh, here today, it's at, um, as uh, Brands Hatches into the pits comes Kevin Ford and Stephen Thomas. Now, this is going to be who the the, uh, the race for the lead Dam is just coming through Sterling's now Ford has just been in his box for about five or six seconds it's going to be very very tight between uh, Dam and Kevin Ford and who is going to be leading this race Russell Ruddock stays out he's going to take the lead but this is the race for the effective lead Kevin Ford in the pit lane for 22 seconds yeah still jacked up as well wasn't he so as uh, Dam come past so um yeah, longer start, 22.7, like you say, so damn very, take... very quick. Is that is that a no-tire stop or something? Or right side so only? Or... Yeah, it could be two yeah. tires, yeah. So, um, but very, very, um, very quick. It's worth pointing out the MX-5s, because of the safety car, they're right in the pack, aren't they? They're not losing a huge deal of time around here. There's only, what, three seconds difference between them per lap? Um, just based on the... The circuit being, you know, more about the corners than it is the straights. Yeah, we've got the top four in the Mazdas separating uh, the 13 Mustangs that we've got. So we've got the top six in the uh, the Mustangs at the moment, from Ruddock down to Thomas. Then we've got Schwenke, Alan Hartley, and Raf J in their Mazdas. And then we've got the rest of the Mustangs, which uh, is currently being headed by Andy Shield. He's starting to pick them off one by one. Uh, yeah. This is what we love about the 90 minute races though, they're keeping us guessing in terms of the strategy. Mike Dam, quickest pit stop time in the, in one of the quickest pit stop times in the Mustang, 17.1 seconds. And then you've got Kevin Ford who did a 22.5, uh, similar times done by the likes of uh, Leon Wright who did a 23, uh, Katila 22 as well. So really going to wait and see who's going to come out on top once the second round of pit stops have gone on. Maybe Mike Dam Alex, he wants that track position, he's got it. He's maybe going for a very quick second stint, and then he can get the fuel in and use that advantage there. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we'll wait and see. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? We've just got to wait and see how this plays out. I mean, we've tried to call these strategies before what's going on <laughs> and just been an absolute mile off. So I'm almost loath to uh, to try and say, oh, this is what I think they're doing. So, who, yeah, who knows at this particular point in time? Um, I think once that second stop happens, a lot more uh, everything will come clear for us, which is uh, it's easy to say. Of course it will. But, uh, yeah. Um, be good just to see um, trying to work it out I think um, yeah, Ford surely going to have a shorter second stop um, going to close back in because damn comfortably uh, ahead 3.7 seconds right now battle for the Mazda MX-5 still continues Travis Schwenke versus John Allen this hasn't uh, stopped even though the Mustangs have been pissing here comes Andy Shield to try and get by them though this should surely happen all the way down the straight here comes uh, John Allen to pick up a bit of slipstream off the rear of the Mustang. It doesn't pick up much, but uh, may help him a little bit. And uh, now Travis Fenke through this uh, Grand Prix section of the circuit has got that Mustang in front of him. I wonder if that may hold him up at uh, some point in the not too distant future as John Allen running a bit wise on the exit of Westfield. Ben nearly putting two wheels onto the grass through Sheen Curve. Once again, Allen right with. Travis Fanky as they go through Sterling's. Yeah, and decided not to push his luck on try anything up the inside there, so um, seems quite content just to sort of sit there at the minute, doesn't he? On to the front straight. This is going to be lap 25 for uh, for the Mazdas. Over the line they go. See what lap times they do. Schwenke doing a uh, 38 1, 38 1 as well for uh, for John Allen, only 4 thousandths of a second separating them there. Uh, about 4 seconds off the pace of what the uh, the Mustangs are doing. Sam on that last lap, 35 2, 34 7 for Kevin Falls, quickest driver of anybody on that last lap, and gap down to uh, 3.2 seconds. Have a look through the field, Alex. Uh, the Feels pretty bunched doing. together. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different close battles actually for position, even amongst the classes right now. Um, Travis Davis and Raymond Bader Jr. as well, very, very close. Um, slow stop for Davis as well, another 36 seconds. I'm pretty convinced that um, Travis and Andy have had some sort of speed in penalty on the way in. Um, 10 seconds or something like that, so just got it, got it wrong. Um, unsafe? Can you get? Do you get a time penalty for unsafe? I think you do, don't unsafe you? Unsafe piss entry, yeah. There is That's that quite, green. It's, yeah, it's quite a common one here, isn't it? With the green, um, the green Grass, area, oh, so. concrete bit, yeah, on the exit. Oh, Andy, yeah. what's going what's on happened? with Andy's around? Oh, uh, Andy Shield. That is a big one as well. That is the exit of Sheen Curve. The engine is done. He is out. Uh, let's see what uh, happened to cause this. I, I've got an, I've got an idea, and it is the idea that I had. Uh, exit of Sheen Curve, Alex touching that grass and uh, literally it's just the slightest touch with the rear tyres and off he goes into the uh, the Armco parry on the exit. Oh big hit, yeah big hit. A lot of smoke and um, I don't know, anyone can still see where they're going. Uh, Leon Wright also in as well um, following him in. What's wrong with oh, him? That, but, yeah. Actually there was two cars involved in that weren't there? Yeah that's what you're saying, Leon Wright there as well. So. Oh God! How did Leon Wright get involved in that? I don't oh, know. Just... I, I got to look at it back to see exactly how he did because they're both into the pit, suffering. Did he do exactly the same thing? Same corner? Just having a look. He goes into Sheen Curve. Oh, he did exactly oh. the same thing. Oh, he's, oh, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying. Oh, and he hits the inside. He did his best to try and save the car, um, so he didn't come over. But then, uh, what's his name? He hasn't blown his motor. But he has got some pretty pretty bad suspension damage. So, yeah, both guys out of this race. It's a shame. Well, uh, with Leon, it was an incident that started about 400 metres or so before um, it, it actually happened. Um, yeah, not at all gone at all well for Leon right there. So uh, those two are going to be in the pits for quite some time, I think. Um, while that was all going on, another very quick lap by uh, Kevin Fours, 34-6 compared to... Uh, Mike down 35-7, another six tenths of a second taken out, and in the space of about two or two or three laps, the gaps come down from three seconds down to two seconds. 
looking at the two quickest drivers in the uh, the Rimitex Force Car Series at the moment. They've now got a four second advantage over Pasquale Inucci in third. Hartley um, is gradually catching back up to uh, the front two as well. Uh, 1.1 seconds to uh, Allen. So I've got a car in between them at the minute. I'm not sure who. Oh no, it's not. Uh, that is Allen in front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden the gap just come racing yeah. down from 1.1 and it looked like it was uh, a lot closer than what the live timing was saying. <laughs> so. Well, last time on Allen did a 38.2, 38.4 for Hartley, but that doesn't seem to have slowed him down at all. As so they go into 30s, it's uphill left hander. In fact, the pretty suits both of these cars pretty well, I reckon. Go on to uh, the straights. See if uh, Harley's able to pick up slipstream. The Mazda's a lot easier in the slipstream than uh, the Mustang. As uh, coming up behind these guys is now Matthew Katila, who currently sits fifth in the uh, the Mustang category. Shows you how how good these guys are doing. And this is what happened because of the safety car, Alex. They were right on the tail end of the Mustangs after they made their pit stops and. Now they're having an out a say in the outcome of some of the battles in the Mustang class. Yeah, you know, these Mustangs are going to have to be quite patient because really the straights here are so short. MX-5s are so good through the corners. They're going to struggle to uh, to get by. You know, they've got to make sure they um, get the best exit they can some, to some of these sort of straightaway sections so they get it done. So focus on the last corner. Um, and then maybe out of like Graham Hill Bend. So um, doesn't look that great for Katila. Got winding it up now, it should get both of them here, but that's what I mean. It took him almost a lap to get by. There are two opportunities to get by, really. This front straight is uh, pushing his luck there was Michael Ruddock. Yeah, the front straight and also the run down uh, Pilgrim's drop. Ooh, oh, my word! That and just goes to show you the difference. There. Yeah, and the MX5s there, you know, they can break just a little bit later, Hartley. Um, you know, forgetting a little bit there that the uh, Mustangs, you know, uh, need to get on the brakes just a little bit earlier. I think I thought there was damage. Uh, Rob Hartley's car looks like it look, uh, just survived intact uh, going through Druids. But yeah, very, very big scare for him as, as the front group in the Mazdas have now got uh, Mustangs all around them. Battle behind Rob Hartley in uh, some Mustangs there. We've got. Uh, Michael Burgetts, we've also got uh, behind him Travis Davis, who's having a little look at the inside there, going into Hawthorne's, trying to recover after what we believe is an unsafe pit entry in uh, his Mustang. Group of four Mustangs, in fact, there we've got Burgett, Davis, Ruddock, and the double zero of Beta Jr. Yeah, That's these guys have been battling, like you say, since the since pit stop, haven't they? Um... Travis is uh, slow stop putting him right in the mix of there. I wonder when the um, MX-5s are going to be pit in. I mean, they're, they're past the 45 minute window now. I would think you know, if they can hold on to another five minutes or so, you know, it's just going to be one of, well, it is going to be the, the one and final stop. I think that's the whole point. They all come in because they knew they could do it one more stop. It's so difficult for these Mustangs to get by, you know. Get that opportunity into Paddock Hill. I don't know, we can't really see too many others, to be fair. I think the straights are just too short. Oh, is that Alan goes all sorts of off and then he uses the exit, the uses the rear of the car as he goes through um, through Druids and runs wide again through uh, Graham Hill Bend. Trying everything to close back up to Schwenke, who has pulled away quite a bit recently. He's got quite a few Mustangs for company behind him in uh, the battling uh, Burgett and Davis we should get him uh, we should get by him on the straight see that happen there goes both go uh, past Davis and Burgett you can see also that, um, that after closing up to the back of John Allen Rob Hartley is really getting hampered by these uh, Mustangs getting past him because he can't get up John Allen at all and now look at Allen Alex as he goes through Westfield Bend he's quicker than the Mustangs yeah, yeah, it's crazy. He's having to sort of be patient. Of course, they'll pull away under the power, but closes back up through the corner. So this is really where the MX-5 is really strong, sort of around this section. Look, he's up on the brakes early again, and won't want any more front damage on that car. Picked it up before he even went green flag racing. That was when uh, the Mazda was getting backed up when they were double file, getting ready for the for the green flag. 
and into the pits comes John Allen. So uh, the tyres, uh, all that is very close to getting uh, uh, too fast entry, Alex. I think he probably has. He entered on my screen when he cracked the timing beam. He was at 79 kilometres an hour. Pit lane speed limit 72. Well, he's got it slowed down enough afterwards, I think, to capitalise for it because the car was jacked up really, really quickly there. So um, normally if you have a stop and hold or something like that, they wait, don't they, 10 seconds before they start to work on the car. So I think he's got away with that one. Very, very close indeed. Into the pits also comes Jeff Jacobs now. We'll wait and see to see when um, all the other Mazdas come in because uh, they all came in at the same time under the safety car and uh, John Allen understandably in the earliest because... He did not take any tyres during the first round of pit stops. 30 second stop for John Allen. He comes out of the pits sixth in class. As the, the Mustang battle, Alex, for the lead is starting to get closer and closer as well. It's now just one second between uh, Mike Dam and Kevin Ford. 35-3 for Dam. 34-9 as uh, Michael Burgett is dropping down the order. What's happened to Michael Burgett? He's had a crash on the exit of Hawthorne's Smoke again coming from the rear of the Mustang and he's been tagged tagged by uh, TD Travis Davis bringing it Off back on replay Burgetts. so we can see what's going on and that might be one for the stewards to review oh I think you're right you will do don't see him getting loose or anything like that before so well we'll see what the steward has to say with that one Eight tenths of a second at the front now. Getting yes. very, very close once again. Uh, another six tenths of a second taken out by by uh, Kevin Ford on that last lap. Gap down to seven tenths of a second, as Alex uh, just said. We have had a few Mustangs come in for the second round of pit stops as well. Uh, Ruddock and Davis both in. They'd only done seven and nine laps respectively. They've now come in again. Let's see if uh, Kevin Ford can put in another blistering lap time, because once again he has been on it in this second stint. Ford has only been on his current stint of tyres for uh, just under nine laps and we can tell you that the incident involving cars 55 and 54 which is um, uh, 55 that was Davis and uh, 54 Michael Burgett under investigation I think those they might have the wrong numbers um, it was those two that crashed, wasn't it, Alex? Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, incident involving those two cars under investigation. Travis Davis has been in his pit box for a long time. I don't know if he's serving the penalty himself, or maybe he's picked up some damage that he needs to serve. But, um, yeah, both of those drivers have been in the pits for quite some time now. Well, once... We'll just have to wait and see, I think, on that one. I, th I think you're right. I think it's going to be a bit of damage for um, Davis. Um, maybe he's a bit annoyed for taking out um, Michael, so he's just pulled it in as well. You know, what kind of a uh, sportsman uh, Travis is, so he'd be kicking himself right now with that mistake. He had been aiming for a top five today. Not going to get that here. But um, it had been an impressive showing by Travis Davis up until uh, where it started to unravel a bit for him. And hopefully he'll be back at the next race meeting at Lime Rock Park uh, where he can try and get that top five. But uh, yeah, Kevin Ford, six tenths of a second now. The gap as they go through Sheen Curve. Now into uh, Sterling's bend. 34.8 on that last lap for Ford. 35.3 for Mike Damp. Improvement there with another few tenths taken out in. Kevin Ford, you can see the gap coming down visibly as we go into clear ways. Gap is now at half a second as we put the power down on the exit. See what lap times these guys do again as they come over the line. Mike Dam doing a 35 3, 35 4 on occasion for Kevin Ford. So, that'll be advantage. But Alex, through Paddock Hill Ben there, Kevin Ford was amazing. He's managed to close the gap up about two or three temps. He looks very comfortable through there, doesn't he? And I think uh, that move he did earlier just gives him a bit more confidence to uh, to push on. Turning into an intriguing battle for the lead and one of the best races of the season we're so seeing so far here. The 90-minute endurance race here at Brands Hatch Grand Prix Circuit here on Apex Racing TV. Fourth race meeting of the Rickman Tech Sports Car Series. 
do have another we have two more 90 minute endurance races to come this season we've got one at most sports in canada coming up soon and uh, we've also got the final race of the season at road atlanta as we are hearing in our ears that uh, travis davis was black flagged for his collision with michael burgett and what i gathered from the whisper of alex is that he's been stopped uh, he's been stopped and he's being held in his pit box for a little while yeah, well, I think they've only just come to that decision. So I think he was in the box already uh, through the damage oh. or something. So here we go. Three wide. Kevin Ford likes to do it in style. And when Mike Dam got held up by the by the Mazda on the exit of Sterling's, Kevin Ford was able to strike and take the advantage. But well, I'm expecting the MX-5 is in. We're reaching sort of 33 minutes. They've not come in again. Um, we're going to need one more stop. When that will be, I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, uh, Ryan Walker's come in. He was uh, he lasted 23 laps on that stint, and he's now uh, come in. But um, Mike Dam's advantage from the uh, from the quick pit stop has been completely eradicated. Kevin Ford, gotta say barring any mishaps in the next pit stop could be on for his second win of the season one is at Sebring could have made it two out of three at Circus GLV on Earth but uh, it was for that slowdown and um, yeah Alex you're right Travis Schwenke leader of the Mazdas is in along with Rob Hartley we're going to have to wait and see where John Allen is after all this yeah where is Allen Allen was a 30.1 second stop so, and he is sort of through the GP section of the track right now. But quite a way to uh, go. Um, it's going to need to be a long stop for these guys. Oh, Travis is still putting on tyres. 24 seconds. The car's coming down. He's going to be away in a second. Fuel going in. 26. There he is. And uh, Alan on the straight. It's going to be. It's going to be close, but I think they're going to be ahead of him for sure. Hartley leaves the pit lane now, so does Schwenke. Allen does have the straight line speed down the front straight, though they are just getting up to speed going into Paddock Kill Bend. But as Alex was saying, it's going to be Rob Hartley, though, this time ahead of Travis Schwenke. So a quick turnaround in the pit box there for Rob Hartley from Carolina. Now nice. Travis Schwenke. Nice and close, that's what we like to see. Uh, Tom Rathjee leading the way in that series, uh, in that class at the moment, just because he uh, hasn't pitted. But I expect him in the next lap or two. And Dam struggling to uh, to keep up with Ford. I've seen that a few times where Ford gets by, um, and especially today as well. You know, he got by and pulled that gap, didn't he? Instantly, so really got a great turn of pace around here as well. Being brilliant race in uh, both classes here today. Happens when uh, Andrew Woodhouse uh, isn't available, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> but um. Yeah, we are enjoying it here and we've got what just over half an hour to go the Ritmatech sports car series uh tom raf j also in in the mazdas uh and as we've pretty much now completed the second round of pit stops in the mazdas before we get the final round of stops underway in the in the mustangs we'll take that second commercial break so you are watching the Ritmatech sports car series the extreme motorsports with the sports car series here on apex racing tv what's you in part uh, by TD's tree service and when we come back we'll get the final round of pit stops in the Mustangs underway.
determination, passion, stamina, and the will to win. The end result, the Rick Motek Sports Car Series. Sports brings you the Rick Motek Sports Car Series, brought to you by Rick Motek High Performance Sim Racing Equipment, and in part by TD's Tree Service. Live Mondays, 8:30 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back to Brands Hatch. Under half an hour to go here in race four, the Ritmus X Sports Car Series. Alex, while we're in that break, the two leaders coming in in the Mustangs, Kevin Ford, Mike Dam. Kevin Ford, very quick stop, 15.9 second compared to Mike Dam's 20.2. Left sides again for Dam. Didn't see what uh, Kevin Ford took, but uh, at the end of it all, Kevin Ford has now got a six second advantage over Mike Dam. Yeah, that's pretty sizable, isn't it? So. Tires are going to have to be a lot better on um, Dam's car for him to reel that back in because I think actually Ford just had an edge, tenth here, tenth there, nothing major, but it was enough. So uh, yeah, those tires are going to have to really be uh, working well to catch that up. Um, very close on the front of the um, MX-5s as well, which is kind of what we expected to see. I'm glad that Alan is still there pushing those guys as well. He's right on the very edge of the uh, draft range. Um, for this car, so just needs a good couple of laps really. Um, with that damage, he's going to be losing a little bit straight line speed. So I feel confident if he can just get a tenth or two, get inside that one second barrier, then um, he'll negate kind of the damage that he's got, his aero effect there. So struggling though, dropped another tenth um, through the first corner. Yeah, now that Schwenke and uh, Rahali are pushing each other so hard, and also both of them. Getting a bit of toe, well, Schwenke is definitely, uh, they could start to pull away. As a, oh no Alex, Rama in the Mustangs, look who is coming into the pit lane for a third time. Oh, Kevin Ford. Oh, uh, Cyber, he didn't put enough fuel in or he got speeding on the way out. It looks like it's going to be a bang on 20 second stop here. Yeah, pretty much 18.9, so, um, well two races in two weeks that it's just let slip away just through little mistakes I mean he's improved as a driver massively we've seen this week on uh, so every, well, week a week now every every race this season um, and uh, he's not used to being in that sort of position I feel um, where he's just got to make make these other parts of the racecraft bang on so that he doesn't um, you know throw away the uh, the wins here, I mean, the last race. Beating penalty, we've just had the confirmation over yeah. uh, the race the race director. Yeah, in our ear there, that's what stopped me, he's dead in my tracks. Um, but uh, yeah, so, yeah, you just gotta, just gotta work on those things now, you know? The, so the, the, the slow down penalty on the final corner of the final lap, you know, something you just gotta make sure you just do, you never get wrong and, uh, you know, uh, he had such a margin, you would have seen that on the relative as well. He didn't need to light the car up out of there. So, yeah, big mistake for um, for Kevin. Barry Schwenke's taking the lead in the Mustangs. I mean, Mazda's um, for Rob Hartley. It was a move that was done into uh, into Druids earlier on on this lap. And uh, it looks like the top three in this class are really going to fight now to the very end. Uh, we have still got uh, Stephen Thomas to pit in the in the Mustangs, he leads the way for now, uh, but he'll be in soon, uh, Dam, yeah, now the effective race leader, and uh, for the second week in a row, 
He's picking up the pieces after uh, an error by uh, by Kevin Ford. Um, as Alex has been saying, he has the pace to win it. Uh, I draw comparisons to uh, Sebastian Buemi in Formula E. Uh, him and his Edams team always, uh, literally always on the pole position, but something always seems to go wrong that ends up costing them a championship. And uh, four races now into the 12 week campaign. Wonder if this uh, could be a crucial moment in deciding who ends up becoming uh, the champion here. We still have got a long way to go, but um, these errors can soon mount up. Yeah, we saw that last season with Dam, you know, it looked like it was going to really cost him, but just managed to, um, to pull that one back. But, yeah, this season's so close, I don't feel like you can can make any errors really uh, uh, and, and get away with it. So the level of competition just seems to be a little bit higher this, this season than the last. Just over 20 minutes to go then. Uh, race order on lap 39 then. Stephen Thomas leads Mike down by 24 seconds. It's 10 seconds back to uh, Pasquale Inucci. Got Brooks fourth, Kevin Ford now in fifth place. Uh, about uh, just over half a minute difference now between Dam and Ford on the track. Michael, uh, Russell Ruddock in sixth, Matthew Katila seventh place, Michael Ruddock in eighth, and Raymond Bader Jr. in ninth. Uh, the pit stops are completed for the Adam Asda makes five now. They've been completed for some time. Travis Frenke has resumed the lead. He was able to get past Rob Hartley uh, a few laps ago. He's in second. John Allen uh, has dropped a bit off now. Them in uh, third place. Tom Rafshay fourth, fifth, Geordie Fike. Uh, despite uh, losing uh, losing a bit of touch to the guys at the front in the class, Alex, uh, John Allen, 16 positions gained despite the damage he's picked up as a car. And that's looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Why... Why is he suddenly 11.6 seconds back? John Allen, I did see him uh, disappear off my timing screen, so I wonder if he might have made um, might have made a mistake somewhere on the lap. I'll have a, just a quick look for you and see yeah, uh, what may transpire. It, it was 1.8 seconds back, and now he's 11.7. So, oh yeah, I just seen what happened. He's had a he's had a spin at at 30s. Well, that would explain it. Pushing hard. Um, it's all done now, he's just going to bring it home, I think, for the podium. We lost quite a few drivers today, um, Adam. We lost a commentator yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, give, Steve. give him some crap later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephen Thomas in. 14.9 seconds to stop, he's, uh, he's out. Uh, well, yeah, we are one commentator down there. One commentator coming, not feeling too well here, but we'll get through to the end of the broadcast. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Cars, cars out of the race. Um, uh, cars out of the race. So we've got Russell Classen. He's been in the pits now for nearly an hour. Scott Kennedy. Uh, we saw happen to him. He was in the thick of it after making a very early pit stop. Uh, that was the reason for his demise. Uh, Dan Carrillo still circling. Have he had been in the pits for five minutes and has been in twice after uh, being involved in a big crash, uh, which brought out a safety car period. The on right also damaged, and uh, he has tried to avoid uh, a crashing Andy Shield and uh, had a similar crash himself. Michael Burgett also in the pit lane and a TD Travis Davis uh, stop and hold. Uh, most likely uh, a repercussion of what happened between him and uh, Michael Burgett. Uh, so yeah, we have got quite a few cars in the pit lane. We've still got 22 cars circling on the track at the moment out of the, uh, about, oh, about the 28 that started. Then a little look at the time limit. Brooks close to Ford, but of course Ford's going to pull away. Ford's got a bit of damage um, now to the front rear, front right of so I should say, of his car. Uh, the little mistake crept in somewhere with the frustration. Um, Walker and um, Geordie Fike, very, uh, very close. Eight tenths of a second. Walker seems to have dropped down through this race. 41.2 second pit stop. That's why he's... Everyone is struggling in here, aren't they, with the pits? I mean, it is a tight, awkward little pit lane. and You know, it's really, um, really cost some drivers some time here today. It does come up pretty quickly. Uh, I remember doing a a, uh, a Porsche Cup race around this circuit, a strength and field official race. And um, I was uh, practicing pit lane entry in a practice session and 
that cone does come up pretty quickly if not that then you run onto that uh, that green concrete on the on the outside and straight away you get a unsafe pit entry so it is a pit lane that does catch the drivers out and um, we have seen a few of that happening uh, today and even speeding on the exit like uh, Kevin Ford did and uh, that has cost him the chance in the race today and it looks like he's dropped off a bit now he did a 37-7 uh, on that last tour of the circuit compared to the uh, to the 34s that we were seeing him do in in the second stint of the race where he was comfortably quicker uh, than Mike Dan who leads by uh, five seconds at the moment Rob Brooks yet to pit I noticed as well he's only uh, he's only been in once 18.4 18.4 laps he's been on this stint now so uh, surely it's not going to be too long for uh, we see him coming. No, any moment I would think. Um, yeah, I'm surprised he's been able to, to to do that. He must have gone quite long in the first stint. I didn't think he was the person who went the longest in the first stint. He was die really. Um, yeah, maybe I'm wrong there. Um, for a long a long second stint, we did see some drivers fill it absolutely up to the top. Uh, we saw Andy Shield do that, but unfortunately we weren't able to see how much he could make uh, use of it. As um, yeah, he had that had that crash. There's been a change of position in the in the Mazdas. Uh, Ryan Walker's just got by uh, Jordy Fike. Walker up to fifth, and um, Jordy Fike down to sixth place. That is Walker up five positions from where he started. Jordy Fike up six now, and in currently sits in sixth place. Those two pretty close. Still, still pretty tight, Alex. Uh, for the lead yeah. in the Masters. Yeah, I was just looking at the lead battle as well, but I just quickly flip back to, to the uh, Fike and Walker um, battle. Uh, Walker, what's he doing? And compared to Tom Rathji, uh, they're about the same. So they're not going to close down in the final 17 minutes of this race. So yeah, there's a couple of couple of good little battles, but unfortunately, yeah, we've lost all the fun, haven't we? In the um, in the GS class, that was, you know, they got an awful lot of coverage at the start of this race. <laughs> I feel like they're not going to get an awful lot now, so it's over to the, uh, over to the MX-5s to, uh, to, to take us into the end of this one. That was between Walker and Raf J still looking pretty interesting. Uh, the top three Mazdas are still on the lead lap. Uh, Schwenke, Harley and Allen still circling on the same lap as the leaders. Probably not for too much longer. Uh, Allen just going through. Uh, Graham Hill bends Mike Dam just going into it now, so they are probably going to get laps by the time we get to the end of the race. I think I do remember a um, Ritmatech race once where uh, we did have a, a Mazda or two uh, finishing on the lead lap. I can't remember where it was, but um, it may have happened before, but uh, Mike Dam should be able to get to them in time because we still have just got a, a quarter of an hour uh, to settle things. And then, uh, Alex, who shall we pick uh, to go on a on a, a lap of? Uh, here we've got uh, a choice of Mike down the leader, or we can uh, have a look at the Masters. Well, I think we should jump in with um, with Travis. Actually, he's obviously got clear tracker ahead of him. But um, no offence to the um, Mustang guys, but we've already had a track guide with <laughs> for you, so uh, let's do it. Um, as uh, Travis heads down onto the main street. Getting himself ready for um, Paddock Hill, and you can just tell that um, such a awkward little corner there. It's almost blind on the way in. The track dips away so much. If you've ever been to this circuit, you'll know that's quite a hill. I've walked this track actually, and uh, yeah, it's crazy walking down and then back up there uh, through Druids. Very awkward uh, hairpin. So many lines you can take through there. Get yourself into a Graham Hill bend, and you really attack that corner you can let the car drift off and use that runoff area and um, into um, yeah I've lost the name Surtees or Sterlings one of the two uh, probably I would say the hardest corner on the circuit so many different lines again that you can take in and um, very difficult to get that absolute um, perfect uh, sort of break in onto the GP section it's just a very fast flowing uh, section of the circuit, all right-handers. A little bit bumpy on the inside, you can just see in the MX-5, just you know, moving around a little bit with the bumps. And um, again, it's all about maintaining good corner speed through here. 
but not running off uh, too far and into uh, the grass. We've already seen what's happened to a couple of people today when they've just gone over the limit. But good lap, I tell you, from uh, Travis. As we come into the penultimate corner and then on to uh, final turn. And uh, yeah, we do it all again. 14 and a half minutes to go here. Oh, just a little bit too much on the uh, inside curb there. Pushed him out wide. Hartley, Hartley pretty close to him. Um, we'll see what the lap time's like as they come across the line to, uh, to complete that lap. Schwenke does a 37.9. A 37.9 as well for Rob Hartley. So, gone all out them both being pretty close by the end of the race. We have seen uh, in a race last season, that epic race at Circuit of the Americas, where uh, the Mazda class did close up immensely in, in the closing stages. And uh, we can't rule out Hartley doing the same. Russell Ruddock versus Scott Brooks. Those positions have just changed. So, I've got a feeling it's because Scott Brooks is going to be making an impending visit to the pit lane. In fact, I lie. It's, um, it's pretty, pretty close pretty battle, battle I'd yeah. say. Yeah, three cars all involved in that. Or was that someone coming through? It might have been uh, someone on a different lap there as well. Uh, that was... Um, oh, no, it's not. No, it was that Ruddock, yeah. Not Ruddock, so, yeah. Uh, Ruddock threw into fifth place now. Scott Brooks down to seventh after getting passed by Matthew Katila. And uh, Scott Brooks, I think your time may be up. Um, yeah, it's got 30 minutes. Don't know if he's trying to um, do one amazing run to the finish on one stop. But uh, into the pits he comes now, so that puts pay to that, and we're making a second visit to the pits. Yeah, kind of, um, kind of surprised you left it so, so long, but uh, yeah, in unfortunately puts him all the way to the back because he's been running on those older tyres. Doing doesn't look like he's doing any tyres; just looks like it's fuel. Car's not jacked up at all. So he's going to try and keep this as short as possible. Let's see what's going on at the front of the MX-5s. That looks very, very close once again. I think there's a back marker involved in there, making it look a little bit tighter. Brooks still not away yet. Ah, no, he is now. 22.9 seconds. In it fact, does... he's, he's left it so late, he's behind these top two in the, yeah. in the Mazdas. Yeah, he's got a bit of personal pride out there, really, now, to be honest. And um, who's that just coming past? Put a lap on him anyway. Was that our leader? It was our leader, yeah. So Dan just lapped him as well. So I think Dan might struggle to um, to get to Hartley and uh, Swinky this uh, this race. So they're going to stay on the lead lap. It's say a few, yeah. For, for once in a race meeting, they did were able to stay on the lead lap, and uh, yeah, the gap between Swinky and Dan at the moment is uh, one minute twenty two seconds. So uh, as Alex has mentioned during the broadcast. Um, the, the Mustang is only about four or five seconds quicker over a lap. So it's going to be interesting to see if they get there in time. It is one of the shortest laps we do all year. And that is even with the Grand Prix circuit at Brands Hatch. So um, we'll, wait and, we'll wait and see what happens. We haven't got uh, too many laps to go now in this 90-minute uh, endurance race. We've been going at it now for nearly uh, 80 minutes. No, we we'll just have got 10 more minutes to go to decide who's going to win this one. I think it's uh, at the moment a foregone conclusion but don't forget Daytona a few seasons ago where Mike Dam was set for victory there and then uh, his internet connection had a, uh, another say in the matter and uh, we've already seen today what happened to Kevin Ford it looked like uh, after his second round after his second pit stop it looked like he was on for one. Frankie and Hartley they are really throwing the cars at uh, Paddock Hill Bend here and uh, Hartley he fancies his opportunity. He was a tenth of a second quicker than Schwenke on that last lap. Really pushing to try and get past Schwenke in the closing stages. Switch up, I think, to uh, to that one. That's where all the action's at. Ten minutes to go. It's worth pointing out that I think we're going to just try and grab the leaders in both classes for the interviews uh, or the winners tonight. It's, uh, yeah, one of the late ones for us. Absolutely nothing. Well, Katila and Ruddock is the only other battle really uh, going on out there, isn't it? But this is uh, where it's all at. For the final few minutes here. Really watching this with intrigue because uh, Schwenke has been the man that's leading, as uh, has led the majority of the race. Even after the opening round of pit stops, which were under the safety car, he was able to hold on to it. John Allen, even with his damage. 
was tr able to uh, try and wrestle the lead away from him for a brief moment when it came to the, uh, the split in the strategy, Alan coming in early and uh, Schwenke coming in later, uh, there was a bit of a difference. And with Alan making a mis his mistake afterwards, it's meant it was down to, between, down to between these two drivers, Travis Schwenke and Rob Hartley, to fight it out for the lead. Rob Hartley, who is, of course, a regular in the car. The same with Travis Schwenke. We've seen Rob Hartley in other series back when we used to broadcast the BSR Mazda MX-5 Cup. Very good there. We do start broadcasting, Alex, the... Uh, the Master Mix 5 Cup showdown this week. Um, now that the Formula Renault is finished, I wonder if we may even see him make an appearance in that. Yeah, possibly. Uh, it could be an interesting little series, just a six week one, is it? Six or seven week, I'm not sure. Our 20 out of the race, Dan Carido blown motor in uh, his uh, Master Mix 5. Uh, that takes the number of cars still running in the race down to 21. Out of the, uh, the 28 that started. Once again, a very high attrition rate here. Uh, I've got all the cars that are running now on a, on one timing screen. So, uh, not too many cars left in this one. In fact, we've only got uh, 11. 11, um, 11, Musta 11 Mustangs in, um, and 10, 10 Mazdas. Yes, uh... I was trying oh. to find. I, I was trying to pick out a stat there, but then I realised there was more. There were more more Mustangs than Masters. Yeah. Well, you know, we 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 said this is a tough track. It you know it punishes people for just driving a little bit over the edge. You know, there's not many circuits like this nowadays, and uh, I lo personally I love them. You know, too many people take um take the mick. I think when it comes to um. You know, just extend in the, uh, the tracks where they can with these runoff, you know, tarmac runoff areas. So, yeah, uh, good. Look at um, look at Silverstone, for example. Uh, we saw quite a bit of that in uh, some of the world's fastest game and stuff that we saw in uh, on mm. on uh, the other you know sim racing platforms. Wonder what we wonder what we'll see with uh, the the uh, the F1 eSport race, which is happening. Tomorrow in America, but uh, today here in the UK, 6 p.m. BST. So, what will that be? Eastern time, about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, there, seven minutes to go, and uh, Harley just getting ever closer. They have lapped, and uh, there must be the Mazda behind. They haven't got much more traffic for a while, but now they can focus on each other. Where is uh? Damn right now. I said he's probably not going to make it there. He might do, you know. He's getting quite close. There, there he is in the background. Yeah. So, and it's what about three seconds a lap? Yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. I think he will. Maybe on the one last of those... last lap ones again. I think. Yeah, it's going to be one of those last lap ones where the top two classes come together. Usually, though, though, uh, we have a a battle in that one. Uh, unfortunately, due to uh, Kevin Ford's penalty, uh, it looks like it's just going to be Mike Dam on his own that's coming around to. So lap these guys. Obviously not coincidence. We do like we do like to see this quite a few times. Hopefully I got that muted in time. You didn't hear me cough. If you uh, did, I apologise for that one. Um. We've had a sneeze though. Uh, that usually wakes people up in the commentary box. <laughs> uh, one of us starts sneezing. Lap 50 now. Here at um, at Brands Hatch, Mike Dam comes across the line today. Uh, 36-1. Or he's just easing at home. Just got over five minutes to go here at uh, Brands Hatch in England. Next week we head to Lime Rock Park, another track, Alex, where, it's, where it is very unforgiving. I think the track has changed a bit since they since they scanned it for iRacing. But, um, yeah, the first corner and that uphill right-hander and the final few corners as well. If you get offline and get off the track, very little time to get back on it. Yeah, very, very similar in, in, in that sense. Um an old school circuit isn't it but where it's got run grass runoff areas and things like that so um one thing is everybody knows that circuit so so well with all the rookie days especially the mx5 drivers so should be uh be interesting to see how they go i expect that field to be extremely close there well no part no, was one of the first tracks i ever saw on iRacing um first time i ever came across iRacing it was a classic game room uh, review uh, back in the day, um, 
expected me to have a go on it and uh, been on iRacing ever since, since uh, 2014, a few years ago, uh, colleagues Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson joined the iRacing service. Yeah, just before Christmas it was, 2012 or 11, oh. maybe 11 I think it was. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just loved it really. I have to say, when you play something for uh, as long as we have, and I felt a little burnt out this year. I mean, I'm still obviously enjoying the comms and stuff like that, but I certainly haven't raced as much this year. I think I've done four races, maybe five. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to uh, to stay motivated. But um, yeah, it's done it for five years, so it's not it's not bad going, I have to say. I think uh, when I look at the rigs that I'm sat in right now, there's no way I'm going to be giving up. Just uh, sometimes, you just have to have a bit of a break. Right, Hartley, very very close. This is as close. As I've seen him be, three minutes forty seconds to go, couple of laps. Surely he's pulling out of the slipstream. He is, and um, yeah, the race is on. It's all oh. down the outside. Goes Schwenke. Can Hartley get it up the inside into Westfields? No, he can't. You can see the speed around the outside. He has uh, uh, Travis Schwenke, and for now he's uh, holding on. Where's my five-year loyalty bonus? Alex is um, is is saying. <laughs> Going into Sheen Curve then, uh, Matthew Katila and Russell Ruddock have changed positions as well. Don't know what happened between those two Mustangs, but the battle for the lead in the Mazda MX-5s haven't been lapped yet either. You can just see Mike Dam coming into shot now as we go into clear ways. What is going to take place here? Because as we've seen throughout tonight, must, the only places the Mustang can get by is on the front straight and on the back straight down. Pilgrim's drop into Hawthorne Bend, so... Dan is going to have to be pretty strategic. He's got the lead and the win in the palm of his hand. We have realistically we've got uh, about two laps to go, I, I reckon. Yeah, I think you're right. Time, this, this one and another. Um, which also means he hasn't got the available time from to Thomas to be able to sit behind these guys completely. Thomas is only 4.5 seconds back. He's starting to close that gap down already. You can see it on the live timing. Um, that quite clearly coming down so Dan's being patient but I, I, I don't think he can leave it I think he has to go past these guys he'll maybe here um, on the exit here yeah exactly pushed it made sure he got a good exit it's going to use the speed and um, yeah Hartley just moves over it's going to have to go one way and then the other but uh, but he does it <laughs> he's going to find you he's going to get you get you get you and um, yeah here he goes Mike Dan laps, laps the entire Mazda MX-5 field. It did take a bit of a while, and of course, the safety car period as well, which uh, kept the Mazda MX-5 right on the back of the uh, Ford Mustangs. But yeah, and uh, Mike Dam leads Travis Schwenke and uh, Rob Hartley to fight over this lead position in the class. We've got uh, 90 seconds to go. So yep, yeah, as Alex was right, next lap will be the final lap of the race, and. Hartley will want to stay down. right on his tailpipe where he can, try and use the draft, um, get some time. It's going to make it even harder for uh, Hartley to overtake if that's the case. And I think they're doing that right now. They're definitely getting a little bit of straight line speed with the draft. So That into the first corner. Hartley running wide. Both of them doing it. In fact, that's the uh, pretty bog standard line in the Mazda X5. It's just a bit of two wheels into the gravel. Now through Druids, now on their way into Graham Hill Bend. The great way about this is a flag comes out, we'll see both cars come across the line virtually together. Mike Dam now has a 4.3 second lead over the second place man, which is uh, Harvey. Very oh, Hartley. Uh, yeah, mine going on the blink. Uh, 24 seconds to go. Alex down the hill yeah, he goes. Uh, to Thomas, that's right. You had me thinking there as well. <laughs> Initially you were talking about Mike and then switched it to the MX-5. So. Uh. Here he comes. Rob Harley at the inside into Westfields. So close to contact that would have ended both of their races. Not too many wide taking opportunities for Rob Hartley to get this one as they go through Sheen Curve. Now into Sterling's. That might be it. One more corner to go, plus we have a run to the line. You can see the speed that Hartley carries through there. We'll have to wait and see because here comes Mike Dam. 
He won last week at Canada. He's going to win again here at Brands Hatch. May have benefited from an error from Kevin Ford again. But uh, you've got to be in oh, to win it. And he goodness. does so. It's going to be wheel to wheel. Uh, Dan wins, but it's going to be Schwenke that wins it in the Mazda X5. So a fantastic duel in that category. Second in the Mustangs goes to Stephen Thomas, who finished 4.2 seconds behind in the end. Bali Inucci rounds out the Mustang podium. And rounding out the podium in the in the Mazda X5s is going to be uh, John Allen, who fought back after picking up quite a bit of damage. This is quite close on screen as well here, Adam. Um, Ryan Walker and uh, George. Oh, well, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> um, like just uh, yeah, like he's just whacking it into the wall there. So I think he's got enough space to Jeff Jacobs to hold on to it. But <laughs> yeah, his car is absolutely minced. Yeah, it comes across the line fifth. Should be enough. Should be ahead of Jordy Fike. Uh, Ruddock versus Ruddock, Alex for fifth and sixth in. That's uh, for sixth and seventh in the Mustangs. Those two have just uh, changed positions with just a few corners to go. And again, uh, in fact, Russell Ruddick's dropping down the order. Can't yeah, be out of fuel. Some issue there, isn't it? So on the final lap. But, uh, yeah, it does indeed uh, yeah, drop him like all it. the way down to uh, to eighth place. But uh, yeah, great job from Mike Dam. Great solid race. Didn't make any mistakes again, which is all important. You know, that's two race wins he's picked up. Not by being the fastest guy out there, but just by not making any mistakes. Travis and Hartley, supremely quick again. Alan the first lap uh, and the qualifying didn't help him did it put him back and then some sort of well really long stop um, in the second second one uh, just meant um, that he was out of reach really six seconds um, I think he I think he, that time come down to six seconds we actually did catch him up a bit because it was at 10 seconds wasn't it 11.2 do you remember when I said why is he 11 seconds behind so mm, yeah yeah, well, I say it's six seconds now. What, what what is it on the actual race result? Because I'm still seeing live timing, so he probably has caught up over his slowdown lap. About four seconds, I uh, reckon, uh, between them. Right. Yeah. Okay, mate. Well, I'll throw it to you. Let's do the results, and then um, yeah, we'll grab the leaders of each class in for a quick interview. But we're going to wrap up the show pretty quickly, as it's uh, yeah, it's getting very late here now. Yeah, just after coming up to 10 past three. Uh, Mike Dam takes the win then. That is another win for him this year. Second in a space of a week. Uh, Stephen Thomas in second. Third for Pasquale Iannucci. Those two separated by about half a second in the end. That was a pretty late battle between those two. Uh, Kevin Ford finishing in fourth. Such a shame, really. He finished a minute behind when he was probably the quickest driver on the circuit here once again. Matthew Katila in fifth. Sixth was Michael Ruddock. 7th for Edmund Bader Jr., 8th for Russell Ruddock, who looked like he was running out of fuel towards the end. Then we've got the, uh, the Mazda MX MX-5s. It was just victory for Travis Fenke and a photo finish with Rob Hartley. Then we've got Scott Brooks's um, uh, Mustang, who pitted very late on and wasn't able to really gain any advantage from doing so. Then we've got uh, John Allen, 3rd in, in the Mazdas, 4th Tom Rafche, 5th Ryan Walker, 6th Geordie Fike, 7th Jeff Jacobs, 8th Chris Tallman, we got Michael Monaghan's uh, Mustang who finished in uh, 18th place overall. Then we got Michael Key in his uh, Mazda, 9th place for him. Then 10th is Joe Boyd, and uh, despite flipping over, was able to finish. Uh, then 11th in his Mustang is Chad Osborne. Dan Carido had a blown engine, so he failed to finish. Then we had quite a few uh, Mustangs out of the race. Michael Burgett, Travis Davis. Uh, both colliding with each other. Davis getting a subsequent penalty as well for his actions. Andy Scheel had a big crash. So did Leon Wright, both in the same part of the circuit and on the same lap. Scott Kennedy crashed not too long after the restart. And then uh, Ryan Russell Classen, the other car out of the race in the 2028 cars, has started here. Right then. Uh, we may as well get both of them in the into the broadcast uh, booth at the same time. We are joined tonight by our two winners, in the class, uh, we'll start with uh, in in the field. We'll start with uh, Mike Dam. Well done, two wins in uh, two races. Ah, thank you. Yeah, was... it was a it was a it was a bit of a uh, I guess uh, a couple of my uh, top competitors there uh, had some issues in the pits there, so a little bit lucky uh, for me to have a, a clean race with a, a good pit stops. 
Well, the first stint, it was uh, nose to tail with all of you, really. Uh, you started on the pole, uh, but then uh, you and uh, Kennedy got into a bit of a bit of a battle, and then it allowed uh, Mike down to come. Uh, sorry, Kevin Ford to come through and, and take the lead off both of you. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a real uh, slick move by Kevin. Uh, he was uh, definitely on it tonight. Uh, especially uh, after that uh, first pit stop, he uh, ran me down. Uh, that was some uh, insane uh, driving there. And then it, it looked like uh, you'd gone for the uh, just for the left side tires on um, on the pit stop, and you gained a bit of time over uh, Kevin Ford, but he was able to uh, to close you back down again. Yeah, and oh, he was he was running uh, good. He obviously took full tires. That's why. Uh, his uh, uh, pit stop was longer, but he took advantage of that. And, uh, yeah, he was running some really quick laps there. I was, I was worried for a bit. And then, um, yeah, he p ended up picking the picking up the penalty. And uh, you were able to pick up the pieces uh, for the second time in a week. So uh, you definitely know how to get it done at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it, it just it, it, it came. Uh, I guess my plan came into fruition tonight, so um yeah like i said uh if uh if uh, a couple of guys hadn't uh, had penalties or, or pit uh, issues there it could have been a much different story next week then uh, we head back to uh to america this time to the lime rock park circuit 60 minute race there around the uh, the tight confines of that circuit it's going to be uh, pretty difficult to find any uh, any space on that circuit i think yeah absolutely that's going to be a, a a crazy one for sure especially if we have a <laughs> A pretty full grid uh that's gonna uh be traffic all race long so that's gonna be uh the number one uh key to the to the race there well, well done on the win today do you, before we let you go do you want to send a quick shout out to anybody oh yeah just uh to all the drivers um uh, uh who make uh, the series what it is uh it wouldn't be the same without them so um i also like to uh, thank frank at rick Motec for uh, sponsoring us uh making it possible for for you guys to uh uh, put up such a great broadcast, so I want to thank you as well. Very well. Uh, we'll return the favour. Well done on the win today, and yeah, second win in uh, two races. Been on the podium, one hundred percent podium uh, rate as well this season. So um, hopefully you keep that up. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to come and speak to us, Mike Dam. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, Alex Simpson, you're with our Master MX Five winner. Yeah, uh, welcome, uh, Travis. Thanks again for uh, jumping in. Great race today. Um, it was a bit of a funny race. We were looking at it at the start, and all of a sudden, like the MX fives, the, the start was a little bit sloppy. A lot of uh, checking up, and then there was quite a separation. And we were a bit like, "Oh my God, we're not really going to be able to show much of you guys." And then we got the safety car, and that completely changed the uh, the way the race panned out. And it was just nip and tuck the whole way um round and i thought alan was going to get back into it for a second as well after the damage on the start so yeah an, an exciting race to uh to watch for us how was it like for for you to run in it yeah you know sometimes you wish you had a race like mike had uh, but man that was just incredible i uh i don't know about maybe three quarters through when john just floating right there at that i don't know he's like 0. 0.7 back 0. 0.8 back or so and he just wouldn't go away he'd pull away a little bit he'd come back i was like i think i need to nickname him the uh, mosquito man because he just was there and just would not go away and uh rob of course was right there and i knew that the pit stops had uh, worked out that we were all right back together and you know i assumed all of us took tires so it was just a i knew it was just gonna be a battle and i couldn't tell if rob was saving fuel or saving tire there you know so it was really really difficult but uh, just a great race on that final lap, he really started to put the uh, pressure on. I think uh, I wasn't sure whether you guys were going to stay on the lead lap or not in this one. It looked very, very close, but uh, yeah, Mike just got to you at the end, and I think um, all of a sudden, um, yeah, you could just tell there was a bit more urgency when he realised it was he, he wasn't going to get that extra lap. He really started to pile that pressure onto you. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I was watching too. I'd watch where Mike was because I took enough fuel for him not to pass us, and I was kind of hoping Rob didn't take enough fuel for for that, you know. And uh, as soon as he got close enough, I said, "Okay, he's he's passing us, and we got to go." Yeah, so, uh, just just same same thing. You knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be on at that point. And then obviously the final couple of corners, just so so close, and coming out across the line, and uh, <laughs> that sprint towards the. Uh, 
the the start finish line uh, you, you always curse i think the mx5 don't you with the uh, the kind of slipstream it gives because uh, it always makes those battles quite interesting you're never really sure whether you're gonna win them or not yeah, and I, and I didn't practice that inside line enough, and I kept it in fourth still. And I'm like, I told Rob at the end, I probably should have used third on that inside line. It was one of those where you got the slipstream and you're just begging it, the RPM to come up, and it, you know, you couldn't push any harder on the pedal for sure. Well, you held on to it again for another victory, so congratulations, mate. Um, uh, anyone you want to give a quick shout out to before uh, we wrap up the show tonight? Uh, yeah, just you guys uh, putting on a great show, and uh, same thing that uh, Mike said for Frank for sponsoring this. It's uh, you know these races every week I look forward to, and it's uh, without people like that keeping everyone in this, it, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't happen. So awesome stuff! Thank you very much, fella. Thanks. And uh, yeah, all the best uh, next week. We'll be uh, we'll be watching you again. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you very much. Cheers, Travis. Bye. Travis, thank you, Darren. I think we're just about out of time uh here at brands hatch alex um yeah when when woody's not here we get we get races like that and um <laughs> don't tell him that <laughs> no, we won't. you stay away more often <laughs> <laughs> oh dear be, so any, any excuse he needs that's it it'll be, it'll be like that so yeah well i think it is just about time for us to um to hit the hay i think indeed so, uh, We'll, uh, we'll remind people that we have got the BSR Master MX-5 showdown that's coming up uh, tonight. Uh, hopefully Woody will be around for that one. Uh, we might be able to return the favour. Yeah. Uh, but yes, <laughs> but yes. Well, can, thanks to he Alex. Can, he can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks to Alex for joining me for this one, uh, keeping me awake through the night. And uh, thanks to you all at home uh, for watching. And uh, yeah, well done to Mike Dam. He takes his second win in the space of uh, two races. Who can stop him when we head to... Uh, Lime Rock Park next week. Kevin Ford will be trying to do so. We'll see if he can do it uh, next week. But from all of us here, Apex Racing TV at Brands Hatch, the Ritmus Exports Car Series. Bye for now.